Hello friends and loved ones and welcome to the most dangerous man alive today's dungeon. In this series of videos I watch an interesting or shitty MMA or Japanese wrestling event, do a recap, and give as many one-liners as I can. This was supposed to be a Christmas timed release because I'm watching a Christmas themed event, but I missed the deadline. So now this video is horribly aged. Today I'm going to be watching Inoki Genome Federation number 2, an event that happened on December 20th, 2007. Inoki Genome is Antonio Inoki's next attempt at a wrestling promotion featuring his style of pro wrestling called Enochiism, and it's pretty similar to his previous attempt, Universal Fighting Arts Organization. It's a mix of strong style and shoot style wrestling in the style of MMA, and I think some of the Inoki Genome events feature the odd real MMA shoot. Anyway, on with the show! This event opens up with people in jackets mulling and filling the stadium while a rather embarrassing theme song for Inoki plays. Wait, did I say embarrassing? I meant absolutely lame. <laughs> The commentators then welcome us in under darkened lighting, and one of the guys either does a secret homosexual hand gesture, or maybe it's just some form of karate. A bunch of guys are introduced at the commentator area, including a guy holding an Anoki Christmas card. In the back, there's a shot of masked wrestlers signing autographs. I'll be honest, I don't know who the hell this is, so let's just move on. Memorabilia on display. That's cool, I guess. There's a lot of time spent with the commentators as the seats slowly fill up, and I don't understand Japanese, so I'm gonna skip all of this. When finally something happens, it's the most Japanese thing you can imagine. A western woman in a wig sings in English beneath what can only be described as a giant transparent dildo. Japan, everybody! You raise me up to more than I can be. Romantic na yuki no naka, Heza Wildman sanga utaimasu. You raise me up, the road. Koko kara ga inoki no shi ni naru desu yo ne. Michi desu. Oh, naru hodo. After that, Anoki himself appears in Santa costume with a championship belt. He pelts poor audience members with green tomatoes. What a sadistic bastard. In the back, we are introduced to Tadao Yoshida and Nao Ogawa. Oh boy, Anoki loves these two guys. He might be the only one. We then catch up with Rene Ruse, who for some reason is looking like George Mirasan, freakishly big former Romanian basketball player who once starred opposite Billy Crystal in a movie called My Giant. Don't remember that movie? That's okay, because it was crap. Here's the premise of the movie. Billy Crystal is small and George George Marison is tall. That's it. They should have just called this movie Small Jew Meets Giant Freak. If you told me that's the name of the movie, I would say, okay, cool, I want to see that. We're then introduced to the rest of the murderer's row of questionable talent that Anoki has gathered tonight. And it isn't looking very good from the start as we see mostly potato sacks like Jan Norchi, some guy named Amazon Blade. Dear God. Michiyoshi Ohara, and I think the fellow named Atushi Sawada forces out a giant fart just as the camera pans on him. The best, though, is saved for last. AJ Styles, he's not as cool as you remember. He takes on low key. That's not how you do push ups. We are then teased with Josh Barnett, followed by Kurt Angle. And no, these two men are not wrestling each other, and it's not the main event. Fuck you, Inoki. It's time for the first match, which I am calling the Battle of the Twinks. The opening promo package is what gave me that idea. Loki, despite adopting a pandering Japanese name, gets no cheers at all. This one looks like it's going to be wrestled in a more traditional style and not shoot style. I'm not sure if AJ and Loki were advised on what Enochiism is, and they just do their own shit with inventive armbar spot here though. Hey brother, give me back my spot, brother. It looks like AJ is going to direct the show here and he's the heel. Laura knows it's up to him because I don't think Loki knows how to tell a story. It's a very back and forth match to start out. AJ will do heel things to reverse momentum. Loki does something, then AJ. Nice spot after an extended eye gouging moment as AJ does a lion salt onto a bridging Loki. Good stuff. After a pin attempt, AJ chastised the ref as being took a slowest counter in the world for God's sake. <laughs> Uh, Come on, bro! No, dude, the slowest counter in the world, for God's sakes. AJ does the phenomenal forearm. That's cool to see so early. Then it's shut up to. 
です。<笑>ちょっと選手の動きが今なんか起きました。観客に起こりました。会場にもシャラップと。Whoa, what the hell kind of kick was that? Did you see that? AJ then botches a bit in the corner, but he saves it and it doesn't look completely horrible. AJ Styles is a natural, a great talent, no denying that. AJ channels his inner Lex Luger with a torture rack, then links it with a body slam for a close two count. AJ calls for the Styles clash twice, but gets reversed. Funny little spot. Styles pulls the ref in front of him to save himself from a charging low key. AJ then pokes his eyes and sets him up for the Styles clash, which results in a pin. Nice ending. Overall, this was a great opener. Styles was awesome, low key, eh. He's okay, I guess. Oh boy, the next match looks amazing. Ha ha ha, just kidding. It's famed locker room farter Atushi Sawada, photographed mid fart, taking on Brazilian male stripper Amazon Blade. It would be great if his middle name was Meat. Amazon Meat Blade. Get it? Well, I think this one will be our first taste of Enochism tonight as Amazon Blade comes out with MMA gloves on. He is really effing buff. Also, funny is he has a little manager with him. Whoa, he's fucking huge! Okay, I'm starting to soften up a bit regarding this match. I don't know if it'll be shit or not. Amazon has IBM on his ass, and he starts with big missing kicks. Oh, God. Oh, God. After absorbing about a dozen pillow shots, a kick to the gut buckles Sawada. I guess there's downs in this match? That's fine, I guess. Look at this action, Maggle! Okay, I totally get the story being told here, and I'm okay with it. This is fine, really. Sawada tries an armbar, but Blade gets his foot on the ropes. I'm being serious here. I think this Amazon Blade fellow is a badass. After some jostling on the mat, Sawada pretends to hit Amazon, who immediately gets up and shoes him in the gut. I laughed. It was funny. More laughter ensues after a knee and K kick to the back of the head. And that's it. Sawada is knocked out, I guess. What a hilarious match. Probably not what they intended, though. Up next is, uh, who the hell are these guys? It's Kazahiro Hamanaka versus your future date rapist, Danny Igazu. Also, I didn't mention this earlier, but the versus screen music is Christmas themed and it's Joy to the World. Now, you have to think about this logically. Antonio Inoki put this event on. Antonio Inoki has converted to Islam. Maybe he didn't decide what music would be played in this. And maybe in Japan, Christmas is just some agnostic celebration. But he should have paid a little bit more attention to the lyrics of the song Joy to the World. The Lord has come. That Lord being Jesus Christ. Jesus. And Antonio Noki. Being Muslim, I think those lyrics might be considered blasphemous. This would be like Shawn Michaels, born again Christian, holding a wrestling event during Ramadan where music says stuff like, I don't know, Allah is the one true God and Muhammad is his prophet. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Danny Igazo is another big bro from the IBM Brazilian team. What is IBM? No idea, nor do I care enough to find out. Also, Kazuhiro looks like a young Nobuhiko Takada. Igazu, similar to Amazon Blade, does not know how to do worked wrestling punches. Kazuhiro tries for a takedown. This match really isn't realistic, and I don't understand Inoki's booking here. Why does he have these giant Brazilian men against tiny little Japanese guys? Is Inoki trying to build up a stable of giant Brazilian men? If so, we can assume Kazuhiro is going to do the job in this one, but we'll find out. There's not much to tell you about this match. It's fought as a kickboxing match. Igazu delivers a knee and Kazuhiro is down. He gets up though. A moment later, Kazuhiro pulls off a giant lift and slam. That was pretty cool. Igazu casually throws him off though. Seconds after that, Kazuhiro rushes in, takes Igazu down, and like a downed bird, Igazu is already flapping his hand to tap out before Kazuhiro even is finished with the Kimura. What? Wow, that was lame as hell. Inoki is probably loading his gun backstage right now. Next match on the card is... What? Pancrase's Ryushi Yanagasawa versus... 
Chris Master Lock Challenge? No fucking way. I don't believe it. Chris Masters isn't as impressive looking as I remember. And Yanagasawa looks like he's about 60 years old. They lock up with Masters being the bully. But then they do it again. It's Yanagasawa's turn. And Yanagasawa really stiff arms Masters. Hard break, then a punch right in his tit canyon. Yes, he has a tit canyon. It's right there. I don't know why, but I'm kind of liking this match, especially with this standoff and exchange. It's fun. You can clearly see the differences in work styles. Wait, is he still doing the fucking Master Lock gimmick? Do people in Japan circa 2007 even know what the hell the Master Lock is? They fight on the outside for a bit. Back inside, Yanagasawa puts on a knee bar, which Masters later escapes with a rope break. Masters does an illegal hold in the ropes. I have to say, Masters acting is both awesome and hilarious at the same time. Then there's this clothesline. Jesus, is he okay? Uh, hi. Oh. This match is pretty good. It feels very Inoki strong stylish without being a full fledged shoot match. It's Master Lock time. Um, and though Yanagasawa tries to fight it off, Masters is too strong, I guess. He wins. Wow. I'm shocked that Chris Masters went over in this match. He would never appear in IGF ever again. So his victory here seems pointless. And I'm still actually really surprised by this result, but checking the stats, Yanagasawa himself would only appear this one single time for IGF as well. So maybe it was just a one-off match. I don't know. What was Yanoki's plan for these guys? Anything? Next up, it's who you've always wanted to see in a pro wrestling match. Former K1 Super Heavyweight Champion, Jan Norchi. He appears to be wearing a zebra skin in his versus screen. He's taking on Taka Kanao. Who the fuck is Taka Kanao? No clue. Taka is a judo guy, I assume, and he comes out to some gentle Adagio symphony. <laughs> I hope that Jan Norgi is in on the joke with his nickname Big Sexy and is not just some delusional jag-off. Also, is he coming out to South African death metal? Anyway, it's time for the match. Norchi is big, a kickboxer, and he's sloppy. And in the beginning moments of the match, he chops Taka down. Taka takes a five count, and I'm predicting that Norgi is doing the job here because he's John Norchi. He's a big, dumb, hairy guy who calls himself Big Sexy. Is Taka a recognized judo guy? Looking online, he has two prior MMA bouts, both losses in a deep promotion, and he started a pro wrestling career after his failed MMA career. I didn't find a whole lot on his judo career. I was about to shit my pants for real after Norchi kicks Taka's head, and Taka looks dead. And then I was like, well, this can't be happening because, as I said earlier, I feel that Norchi is doing the job. Maybe Inoki is humbling Taka here, but then Taka gets up, so my prediction still has a chance to come true. I have to give both guys credit because they are making this match more interesting than it should be, and there's a good escape moment after a knee bar. I have no idea how it's going to end now. The finish comes immediately after this though, as Taka does a judo throw with Norchi doing most of the work. Norchi then is smart enough to move himself out of the ropes and Taka eventually uses his pant leg somehow to choke or hurt Norchi? Well, okay I guess. Looks like my prediction was true. This match was alright, another quick one, which kind of gave it an MMA feel, seeing as how MMA fights can unexpectedly end quickly. But surprisingly, the big fat hairy ugly kickboxer carried the judo master in a pro wrestling match. Wow. Whoa, we get a cameo from Dr. Death. This is both sad and awesome. Mr. Onoki, good luck with your new company. Don't forget the great matches we had against each other. I want your retirement match. Come about that. Then it's Too Cold Scorpio, who has a Bluetooth earpiece hanging out of his ear, very ahead of his time, circa 2007. Now, if he still walks around with it in his ear to this very day, that would make him a douche. Notice behind him is what I imagine some type of parade float that Inoki is going to ride down to the ring, I hope. Inoki Genome Federation, come for the fighting, stay for the music interlude by Triple P. The ringside commentators are really excited for some awesome Inoki merch like Coffee Mug, Oriental Fan, and, and Green Tomato? Joy to the world, the Lord has come and brought Michiyoshi Ohara with him. Ohara, one of my favorite sacks of shits of all time, comes out to the ring with Who let the dogs out? Is he calling himself a dog? 
The motherfucker can barely walk. Ohara sporting D-cut boobs. He looks completely ridiculous. I say that, but have you seen his opponent? I don't know anything about Yoshiki Hitokui, but I do like his yellow gloves and shoes. Ohara might be even worse at fake fighting than he is at real fighting. Is there specific rules for guys wearing gloves and guys not wearing gloves? Is Ohara not allowed to punch? Why does he keep trying to grab him? Hitokui slugs Ohara, then puts him in the corner, tries to knee him, then tries to choke him, but Ohara lethargically gets out. This is really believable. Ohara now on top, and Hitokui punches himself. Not sure if that is accidental or not. The men crawl outside the ropes, and the ref, I'm not sure if he understands that he needs to act like an official overseeing an MMA bout, and not just stare off blankly into the yonder. Hitokui delivers an overhand punch, then knee, and you know what? Ohara is such a bag of shit, he might just actually be knocked out from this. But unfortunately for me, and for you, the fight does continue. After the fight restarts, this happens. <laughs> Apparently, headbutts are not forbidden? When it's clear that Hitokui is getting up, Ohara sets himself up to do it once more, since the ref is doing nothing to stop this, and Ohara goes for a pin. Wow, talk about subverting expectations. Immediately after Hitokui kicks out, the match really takes it to another level. Whoa! What's happening? Ref! Do something! Oh my god, what's happening now? <laughs> So I guess Hidakui is the winner despite punches to the back of the head. Well, okay, Hidakui leaves, getting some love from Fujiwara. We don't get to see what happens to Ohara. Oh well, on to the next match. It's time for the meat of the event with Josh Barnett versus someone I've never heard of who calls himself Montana Silva because Giant Silva was already taken, I guess. Apparently this giant freak is a K1 fighter. He has wins over Butterbean and Yusuke Fujimoto and losses against Musashi, Ernesto Hust, and Semi Schilt. Josh Barnett, true to his name has a baby face. Wait, did he just call Josh Barnett Joseph? The bell rings and Montana is a little spitfire. It's kind of cute. He gets taken down by Barnett, who threatens a rear naked choke, then an armbar. Then Montana smacks Josh in the tits. Giant Silva is back up and Barnett grabs him, threatening with suplexes, but Silva is just too big. And I guess that's the story of this match. Giant Silva is a giant. He pushes Barnett around a bit in the early going, but Barnett is showcased as being an awesome grappler. Giant Silva scores a flash knockdown that looks kind of silly. After Barnett gets up, Giant Silva goes berserk in one of the funniest sequences I have ever seen in pro wrestling. I laughed. Loudly. This is great. And Silva didn't get DQ'd, even after beating on the ref. Later, Barnett finally delivers on the suplex to great effect, then applies a Kimura and victory. And then the hilarity continues. This is great, 10 out of 10, though the face-off just sort of ends awkwardly. Before the next match, more filleting of Inoki. Booker T, no way. He says he couldn't make it to this event, but he'll give Japan the Booker T experience next time. Can you dig that, sucker? Now can you dig that, sucker? Next, we get some announcement. Uh, skip. The announcement leads directly into Kendo Cashin's entrance, so maybe the announcement had to do something with the match. Anyway, the next match, Cashin versus Kurt Angle. Now, you might recognize Cashin if you've ever watched our Pride reviews. He fought under his real name, Tokimitsu Ishizawa, against High and Gracie, trading a win and loss with High and Gracie. I don't really care about Kendo Cashin, but I do really care about Kurt Angle. He looks great here, as his knees aren't completely fucked and he walks semi-straight. Seriously, Kurt's last run in the WWE was hard to watch. He walked with a per permanent bend in his knees. It looked painful. The match starts off with mat wrestling, of course. 
It's a Kurt Angle match. Honestly, Kurt Angle could have been a stud in shoot style. Hell, if he would have been a decade earlier, he could have been a stud in Pancrase. So there's a moment early on in this match that made me fall in love with it, and it's when Kurt Angle has to peer away over cash in with this hilarious cute little bunny hop. It was just so great. Also, pay attention to the end here. Kurt Angle points to his head, signifying he's too smart for cash in. Then this happens. <laughs> This then leads to a half minute of trading European uppercuts. Hey, here's a fun drinking game. Take a shot every time they do a European uppercut. If it's not clear by now, Kendo is the heel. He threatens a hit angle with the chair, but the masked old timer who's been outside the ring the entire event impedes him from doing this. Thanks, masked old timer. And fun fact, I was told by our friend and loved one, Chris, aka Ye Lord 2, that the masked old timer is Dick Bayer, aka the destroyer, who just passed away. Thanks, Chris. Then they do some rest holds, and Angle works over Cashin. Angle is then thrown off the second rope and Cashin goes for an armbar. Kurt's selling here with yelling and groaning is awesome and one of the best armbar pro wrestling sells I've ever seen. After another arm bar spot, Angle is selling his left arm, which Kashin has been targeting. It wouldn't be a mid 2000s Kurt Angle match without the three German suplexes. Does he call this anything? Eddie Guerrero called his three suplexes the three amigos. Then Angle takes the straps down, does the angle slam for a two count. Then, wow, I never expected to see this. Seriously, Kurt Angle does the figure four leg lock? Has he ever done it before? The figure four fails, so now it's time for the ankle lock. Or is it angle lock? Anyway, Cashin flips out of it and into a roll up for a two count. The finish comes right after, as there might be a botch on a sequence here, but Angle locks in the ankle lock, and Cash and Taps. Great match. Oh yeah, I forgot I was giving these matches ratings. I forgot to rate the last couple matches. I give this one an 8 out of 10. It was great. Almost amazing. After all the great action, what do we need? A piss break? A drink break? How about an Anoki break? I'm not sure what Nanoki says. After he leaves the ring, there's a promo package for Dear Lord Tadao Yoshida. It looks like Tadao's been in the tabloids, and I wonder if that's his daughter or his mistress, his wife? Who cares? It's time for the next match. Tadao Yoshida versus Rene Roos. Tadao looks in good shape. I'll give him that. Rene Roos, eh. He's a dirty Dutch kickboxer who Inoki really likes for some reason. Rene Roos botches getting into the ring. Also, he's wearing a Speedo. Well, the match starts and I don't think Renee is working here. Those kicks look high power and the knee. Ugh. I think the storyline here is Tadao is an old man who can get the shit beat out of him. At least Renee is destroying his right arm and not his face or lumpy head. I'm about ready for this match to be over and I think Tadao is too. What's happening? What are you doing, ref? So I see Inoki sitting there and I'm wondering, is he happy over this? Embarrassed? Hard to tell. Tadao, you shoot at everyone. What? Well, time for the next match then, I guess? It's the main event though, and I completely forgot. The main event is Naoa Ogawa versus Tadao Yoshida. Yes, Tadao just fought. I have a lot to say about Naoa Ogawa and not enough time to say it. I really don't like Ogawa. There's something off about him. Just look at his walkout here. Doesn't something seem off? Is this match a blood feud or something? Did Tadao sleep with Ogawa's wife? Is that what the tabloid papers were reporting? I do like Tadao's selling here though. There's some awkward jostling in the corner leading to this low blow. Wait, what? Now chairs are illegal? The rules are all over the place and enforcement of the rules is haphazard at best. I know it's pro wrestling, but there has to be some consistency, some to create a little belief. The commentators really found this exciting. Me, not so much. <laughs> We get some high kicks. 
Then Ogawa does his finisher. It's called the Ogawa Moonlander or some shit like that. He also beats up the ref. Still no DQ. Hey, remember when Stone Cold refused to give up against Bret Hart and it made him a superstar? Yeah, this isn't like that at all. You couldn't make Tadao Yoshida a star even if you set him on fire. Ogawa does his finisher again. You thought WWE came up with the whole takes three finishers to beat a guy script? Nope. Enoki, baby. There goes another ref. Still no DQ. The crowd starts a chant for Yoshida. Inoki has risen and he jumps in the ring. Maybe they were calling for him. He kicks and then socks Ogawa, then chokes him, and then he kicks to Dao too. <laughs> Why? What is happening? The bell is ringing. What is going on? <laughs> I think Ogawa is dead. At least the match is over. Problem is, nothing was resolved, and Ogawa got squashed by a 60-year-old Anoki. Not a great look. This was awful. Ogawa tries to get his heat back afterwards. I guess maybe I'm missing the backstory here. Are the three of them bros or something? Ogawa is out of there, and Anoki gets on the mic. And I'm just gonna pretend he says that he's come to the realization that Ogawa is trash and a shitty worker, and that's why the crowd pops. <laughs> The show ends with one last discussion between the 10 commentators they have. What the fuck? And that's it. Show's over. Overall, I rate this event a 6 out of 10. It was okay. Mildly entertaining. I think it was kind of sloppy, anchored by a brutal main event that was honestly a bit suffering to sit through. I'm not sure I like this. Anoki might be revered in Japan, and maybe a lot of people don't question him or his style, but I think this was inferior to, say, I don't know, Takata's hustle from a couple years prior. Anyway, that's it for now. Stay tuned for more videos. Bye.